Hi, my name is Mandolin Royal, and today I was looking over the pullets from the mid-September hatch, and I went ahead and I pulled the three most developed girls from that pen. I wanted to get a weight on them and start handling them and see where they're at. They've pretty much been left alone to grow without much handling or interaction besides, you know, the daily chores, pen cleaning and doing the food and water. Their hatch group, I have sorted twice. So what's left in there, I had liked early on. But they're coming into laying age. And I wanted to look closer at them and see if I could get a number on how many I may be able to retain out of the group. This girl weighed in at the heaviest at five pounds, nine ounces. And I like her a lot. When I picked her up, she had that heft and she had the shape and she had the feeling of meat in there under those feathers. And that's really important that they have that kind of condition when they're coming into laying. Because after they start laying eggs, they're not gonna gain a whole lot more maybe another pound or so, because all their energy is gonna be going into laying. So they have a lot of growth to get done in a short amount of time before they start doing those early eggs. From the looks of it, she's probably gonna start laying pretty soon. She had the most developed comb, most developed wattles, most developed growth, so she's probably gonna be the first one to start laying too. So I'm glad she's the biggest one. <laughs> I'm going to pull her out for a hands-on evaluation after we get through looking at these three. We'll do that from the above angle so you can kind of see what my hands are doing and what we're looking at. I like how they're not that flighty. They've been curious not too jumpy about things. I think the temperament's pretty well stabilized in this line of birds. And these do go back to my originals. They're not from my line crossing experimentation. <laughs> Which I do for science, to learn more about the genetic expression, to learn more about how trades pass forward. Just going on my own little learning adventure since I have the pen space available to mess around with some of that. She's so, showing us the back side now. You can see there's a nice little opening there in between her tail feathers. That's always a nice thing to see. Her wings are pretty tidy, nice and closed up. She's got the foot color. She's got some bluing on her beak. And that's a desired look so long as they don't carry a darker color scheme in their skin in order to pull off that coloring. Sometimes you'll see really dark blue, almost black looking beaks and they might actually have some fibro in the genetics and that'll show in the skin color. When I get her out, we'll ruffle her feathers a little bit and I'll show you the skin color underneath the feathers. All three of these girls are still growing in their tails, but I like the initial angle that's showing on them. With some more growth, we'll see how big her comb ends up getting and if it's going to dip in the right spot. If there is a chicken show happening next weekend, though, I'd put that one in it. I like her a lot. <laughs> I'm excited. This might be the first fall coming up in 2023 where I might enter some of these in an open show. You can put unofficial purebreds into an open show so long as you bring a copy of the breed standard. That way the judge knows what he's looking for in them. That could be a pretty good time. Some of the show people are really wonderful people. A wealth of knowledge and fun to hang around. And they have influenced some of my breeding decisions and some of the care we take in developing our birds. 
finding your birds that reflect the breed standard will fill your freezer up pretty quick too. Might even fill your freezer faster than just regular old egg hatching. Once you start getting nitpicky about them. You want to move around? Show us all your angles. What do you think? You're not too worried. What if I reach in there after you? You're not going to freak out too bad. This one was right at five pounds even. She felt pretty good, but she's ever so slightly on the narrow side of things now that we're looking. And with the neighbor over here having an extra nine ounces on her, it's probably got a bit to do with fleshing and a bit to do with the body shape and what sort of frame they have to carry the fleshing. Because they do need to have the body size and capacity to be able to carry extra weight. This one is the least developed out of the three. She weighed in at four pounds, 10 ounces. What do you think? You wanna stand up, move around? She's worried, but she's not freaking out too bad. At least not yet. She's a lot more narrow. Her tail isn't as open as the others either. Her head's a little small. Missy, how do you feel about making breakfast eggs? Show me the other side. Just turn around. It's real easy. She has the shape in there with the width in the front tapering back, but I think she's too narrow on the back side. Not really crazy about this one. She did get some length. She just didn't get as much width. Yeah, she's tighter in the back end. Her wings don't close up as tight. So either I ruffled up her feathers when I was moving her or she's carrying them stupid. Handling her and spreading those wings out and getting a look at them will tell me what's going on there. Hey. This one's not too bad. She's worth growing out some more as a possible breeder bird. She got the width just enough. She got the length. Her angles are pretty good. Color's great. Solid contender. This one I think is going to be for breakfast eggs though. Using the narrow ones has never worked out to benefit the next generation. What do you think? You want to come out and show us your details? I think I'm going to go ahead and get set up for that. Can we see your backside again? Just not too bad. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get set up so we can look at this one a lot closer. Alright, I've got her up here and I don't know how this is going to go. She might be a little wild, she might cooperate. We'll get her settled down. So while I'm
calming her, which involves holding the wings nice and tight, keeping good support underneath. I'm using this underneath support to feel along that keel line and up front in the breast. If you're familiar with working with other dual purpose varieties, sometimes there's not a whole lot of meat up in the front. So it's one of the most important things to select for when you're working on breeding in those better table traits. So now she's talking to me in a nicer voice. She doesn't seem so panicky. So we'll start at her head. The width here, you can use your fingers if you want. See how many knuckles. That way you have your hand with you to look at the heads on the other birds you're going to sort. Using your hands to measure is really handy because you won't leave them behind. They're going to always be with you, <laughs> hopefully. So her comb Hold still. It dips this way first and then it dips over that way. And that's not exactly ideal. But it's also not that important for the table. Her beak's pretty good. It could be a little shorter and a little stouter, but not a deal breaker. She does have white in the earlobes there, just a little, not fully. Man, what she has right there is nice. All right, we gotta see your shape. Turn around. You're okay. So the width of her, right in there, is really nice. Her thighs tie in right about dead center. She's a girl, so the thighs aren't going to be incredibly meaty, not like they would be on a male. And then she has the taper that goes back. But you have to be careful with that taper. Like She's all the way out here for width. She's not pinched up and she's not narrow. Because sometimes when people are chasing this shape, they get too tight in the back end and you really want to avoid that. It's a lot easier for them to lay the bigger eggs when they have really good back end spacing. So you want to make sure they still have back width back in here. She's not very fluffy. I like that too. So for checking her wings, I'll bring one side close to the body. I'll support the other side of the body with this hand right here. And then I'll use this one to tease the wing out and get it to spread so we can make sure that she's feathering in properly. Make sure there's no obvious feather flaws or too skinny in the feathers, or weird bends, or anything not right, because the wings are her escape. If she was free ranging full time, she needs to have the vigor and the gumption to get the heck out of the way of danger, but she also needs to have the mobility to do that. If she needs to shoot six feet up into the air and take off, her wing integrity is gonna help her do that. Don't be so stingy. Let me see it. Still some growth going on in there. You can tell they're actively growing feathers because there's going to be long feathers and there's going to be short feathers. Now the backside measurement on the girls is really important. 
You want to see that nice open tail, but the pelvic bones down below and to either side is really important. Holy cow, you probably are going to start laying soon. I haven't found any eggs in the pen yet. She's at a three finger width already. So I'm not going to be surprised if I do find a little bitty pellet egg in that pen in the next week or two. Usually they're not that stingy about it. Another important distance to check is where the keel ends and where the pelvic bones are. The distance there, I'm going to have to use my pinky. That's at four fingers. So she has three fingers across in between the pelvic bones and then she's got a four finger width from the end of the keel up to those pelvic bones. So her backside spacing can only get better from here. She's a very, very promising bird for breeding quality. She's got pretty good odds of making some good chicks once her eggs come up to the hatching size and she showed us that she can live through her first year without intervention, without help, and do all the things the chicken should be able to do. I like her a lot. Next, I'm going to run my hand down the full length of her keel, and I'm going to feel for any divots, bends, curves, anything other than straight, as well as the overall length of it. With how meaty she is, it takes a little bit of effort. It's not obvious. So I kind of wiggle my hand using my middle finger back and forth like that to kind of get a feel for the integrity of it. And then I'm going to turn her around and measure the length of it. With how long she is, it's probably going to feel okay. You're fine. I know. We, we've never done this before. I know. Well, that feels pretty good. Can I mark it on my hand to show everybody else? So I've got this part of my palm. I use that little divot right there to put the very front edge right there. That way I can use my fingers to find out how long she is. And the end of it's coming right there. So now I can use this same measurement and I can check the other girls and I can figure out if they go past or if they come in before. I'm never going to forget to have my hands with me. So they are my favorite measuring tool. I keep meaning to bring out one of my sewing tapes so I can measure the girth all the way around so that I can measure back length and actually see the differences numerically. But I still haven't remembered to bring it out here. <laughs> Her back length, let me see if I can get that. There it is. So you want to find where the neck ties in. Your hand's going to be underneath feathers, which is why you've got to get your hands in there and actually feel on them. All the way back to the base of the tail. So she's about a full hand in length. And that's putting my wrist right there at the base, running my hand all the way up. And this finger isn't touching her neck, but I can kind of feel that little hollow where the neck ties in. And anytime you don't feel confident handling a bird, just go grab a bird. Go catch it. Get it in your hands. Hold them. Pet them a little bit. They don't mind it. It can help calm them down too. Move them around.
the more often you do it, the more familiar you get with it and the easier they get for handling. She's chilled out a lot just by being here for 10 minutes, getting messed with. Now it's almost like she trusts me. So that's the girls so far. I've got more to get through. I'm gonna go ahead and get these girls back and get back to doing chores. More on this later. <laughs>